the General Secretary of Lima, Leonard Foster. Well, uh, <coughs> thank you, Andrew, for that. You'll have to forgive me, comrades. I've got a, a little bit of a cold at the moment. Uh, you've pinched half my speech. But the first thing that I wanted to do <coughs> was to thank you for being here on a cold Saturday morning when there are other things to do. And I want to thank you because it is this type of mobilisation that we are going to have to have right throughout our nations in order to build the anger that Andrew has just spoken about. You know, 15 months ago, <coughs> 15 months ago, we all knew who was responsible for the crisis. It was the greedy bankers, it was the spivs and the speculators. But every single day, the media have been drip-feeding us this sinister mantra that there is no alternative to cuts and the blame lies at the root cause of workers and public sector borrowing every single day. Drip feed, drip feed, so that they can debilitate us. You'll recall some of you in this hall when that sinister mantra was used before. It was used by Thatcher in the 80s when she told us there was no alternative. No alternative to three million plus on the dole. No alternative to the decimation of our manufacturing industry. No alternative to the decimation of our communities. And comrades were being asked to buy the same lie once again because that's exactly what it is. It's a lie. There are alternatives. There are alternatives that have been mentioned by Mark and others, alternatives that we need to raise the confidence and consciousness of our members and the general public. And the point I made about my experience telling me that when workers are confident anything is possible is absolutely true. The history of our movement tells us that. The history of the world tells us that. That's why we do need to build an alliance of resistance with community groups right throughout the land. We need to make certain that we're linking up with our communities and unite next week as the new General Secretary. I will be instructing our area activist committees to link up with the anti-cuts uh, committees that are growing up right throughout the country. <clears throat> Comrades, the other thing that the media constantly do, and mark it on it again, trying to tell us that there's nothing we can do about it, debilitating us, trying to divide private sector workers from public sector workers. We've heard it before. We've heard it all the time. Well, private sector workers have had to make do with cuts in pay and closures, so why should public sector workers get away with it? It's a sinister attempt to divide working people and we're not going to allow that to happen because the reality is this fight affects private sector workers as much as it affects public sector workers. And the way they talk about public sector workers makes my blood boil. Who are these chinless wonders, these harbingers of greed, who talk about our public sector workers? Public sector workers are the people who teach our children, who heal our sick, who care for our elderly and fair, who encourage our youth. <laughs> comrades, comrades, they, public sector workers are the people who clean our streets and collect our refuse, the very people that create the fabric of the civilised communities that we live in. And we're not going to allow public sector workers to be isolated and attacked by these people. The reality is, we need to make certain that not only do we say to people that these cuts are morally wrong and economically dangerous, but we need to pose our alternatives as well. The reason for that is that simple. You won't know anyone, you won't know any of your members of your family or friends who if you ask them the question, do you want less public services? No one says yes to that question. Everybody wants more and better public services. But we have to pose the alternatives. I see at the back of the hall there the People's Charter. And that's something that we need to grasp hold of more strongly. We need to project the aspirations of the Charter, which puts 
people before prophets, which talk, talks about the fair, fair attack system that Mark talked about. You know, the figures that he gave you are not figures plucked out of thin air. These are figures that are given to us by independent fiscal bodies. Forget about the tax evasion for a moment, that is illegal. God knows how much we lose through tax evasion. But tax avoidance, tax avoidance is legal, open and transparent. And it loses the Treasury a minimum of £25 billion a year. Just think what we could do with that if we had a government that had the courage to grasp that nettle. And unfortunately the last government didn't. Had they have done that, perhaps they'd have been still in power. Then not only would we not be talking about cuts in public expenditure, we'd be talking about improving public services. More importantly, we'd be talking about investing, investing in our manufacturing base. What we've seen for the last 30 years when the world economic orthodoxy has been uh, neoliberalism and the free markets and deregulation, what has also come with that in the UK, 13 years of it disgracefully under the Labour government, has been a UK for sale sign above our nations. It's been like a car boot sale. Come on in and buy what you want. And they have. They've come on in, bought what they want and closed us down and taken work elsewhere, destroying the very fabric of our manufacturing base. And why? Because British workers are easier and cheaper to sack. And that's something else that we have to link together here. 13 years of a Labour government and we still have the worst protected workforce in the whole of Europe. How can that be right? How can it be right? How can it be right, comrades, that the very nations that 65 years ago fought and defeated the evils of fascism and gave Europe the freedoms that they now have, how can it be right that German workers and Italian workers and Spanish and other workers have better rights than British workers? And we have to say that this resistance against the cuts is only the beginning of a resistance against the type of attacks that have been launched against working people and against trade unionists. It is time for us to stand up and be counted. It is time for us to stand up and fight back. And I am confident that when working people join hands together, anything is possible. Frederick Engels 150 years ago said, no power on earth can halt a united British working class. It was right then, it's right now. Let's stick together and victory will be ours. Thank you very much, Len. We're very proud this is Len's first public engagement after this election. And we thank you very much for attending this conference. And part of that